Merry Christmas to everyone. Hitman from BlackOpsFishing.com. It's pouring rain. The camera's near the windshield. You're probably going to hear that, but maybe it'll be soothing. I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I wanted to do a closing fishing video, and I'm actually going to a uh, sewage cleanup job. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a video. Don't feel bad because it smells like money to me. I've got all kinds of gear. I don't smell it. I don't touch it. So that's another story. Just wanted to wish you Merry Christmas to my community. And for once, it, it is my community. Uh, my first six years, I was banned from AdSense for some weird reason, unknown. And uh, I filed rebuttals once a month, every month, for six years. And one day I just said, screw it, man. I, I want to be like everybody else, man. I want to add sense. And I was going to open up Al Sims Fishing. I started it. I started opening it up. I had a couple of things done and uh, checked my email. And lo and behold, I was reinstated to AdSense. So, that made me realize, in all that time, I wasn't really, I wasn't earning, so I didn't try to do the SEO on my videos. I didn't communicate to my community very much. I watched your videos. I didn't really like them. I liked them. I didn't do like and comments. I was banned. I just did, you know, did my own thing and made videos that I thought would help people. I'm sure I liked and commented on a few along the way, but you know, it, I was hurt to not have AdSense, and no one, everyone that knew me, didn't couldn't understand why I would keep doing it. You know. But I have a thing for making videos. They might not be that good, I, but I like it. I like making them. I always have. So now that I have AdSense and I'm part of the community, like equal, you know, equal to everybody. I make a lot more comments. I watch your videos all the way through and try to let you know that I watch them. I uh, like them. I share them. I do all that good stuff. But, uh, man, seven years, and I'm just under a 1,000 subscribers. I would love to hit a 1,000 subscribers for Christmas. So come on, guys. We got, uh, this is uh, Saturday. So we got the rest of today and Christmas Eve to get me less than 20 subscribers for Christmas. Thank you in advance to keep off my pants. Well, I'm, I'm at a, the job here today and I'm waiting for the uh, people to get up. But I guess I'll take this moment to tell you about our sinking in the boat. My son and myself sunk in a boat back in October off of Hatchets Point. And um, Long, well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about, I, I'm embarrassed about it, but I'm going to tell you about the sinking of the boat. It's probably my 18th boat, I figure. I've had 24 foot boats. I can read charts. I, most of my experience is in the ocean. Sean and I saved up our money. We were almost going for halibut. And we see this boat and, uh, all painted up it's an older boat we like old boats all painted up to looking beautiful I didn't realize it was all fresh painted actually but we see this nice looking older boat and it was only twenty five hundred dollars and it's a twenty uh, nineteen foot center console it's called an Alcar Fisherman and we said, man, if we just get another saltwater boat, because we got this bass boat, and we love the saltwater too, so we go back and forth. If we get that saltwater boat, 
there's a whole bunch of trips we can do. So we slept on it, and the next day we went and we bought that boat, and uh, the guy had hidden so many flaws with paint and so many things. Unbelievable. Now, and you know, I feel bad, but uh, at least we're alive. So anyway, we took this boat out, and we we know what to do. We played with it in a bay for a while and fished, and you know, it seemed okay. I didn't like the way the water um, wasn't leaving the back uh, well fast enough. It seemed a little weird, but check the bilge, check unscrewed the bottom. I didn't see any water in there. At that point, it could have been leaking and, and going forward, but uh, I don't know for sure. But uh, we played with it for a while, and the motor needed some revving up, you know, to get it running good. You could tell it just it needed to go for a run. So we were going to drive about a couple miles down the shoreline and come back. Staying 200 yards from shore, driving down the shoreline, gunning it. It was going good. Everything seemed fine. And uh, the motor just conked out in a rip. It's called uh, Hatchet's Point. And I don't know if you're a boater, you know that motor will kick on again, usually, a lot of times, after it, you know, gets unflooded or whatever happens to them, you wait five, ten minutes and they kick on again. Had it happen a hundred times. So uh, we were in that waiting game, and since we're in a rip and going to be drifting farther out, we put out the anchor and we we're waiting and we started fishing fishing was so good right then <laughs> unbelievable we didn't lose track of time i couldn't stop looking at the boat uh, it was hard for me to fish and every you know five few minutes sean tried to kick the motor on and it wasn't starting but it was getting closer that's what happens so you wait a little longer and uh all of a sudden I said, are we sinking? And he turned around and said, yeah. And within 15 seconds, guys, that boat was just gone from under us. And we were floating there in our life jackets. It was kind of tranquil at first. I mean, it was just, it didn't, it went down like this. <laughs> you know, and we were just floating. And, uh. $10,000 worth of gear, guys. Not No boat stuff. All our rods and reels, our rain jackets, our headlamps. We were going to have a... We were going to stay at night if everything was going good. Everything. Cell phone, my cell phone. It, we added it up. It's ten grand. That stuff adds up fast. Your pliers, your everything. Oh, my... All oh, my whole collection of saltwater tackle in this big pouch oh years and years of stuff I, I have more and I was surprised how much I could still find in my garage but a foul, two, that was a two thousand dollar tackle box loss right there anyway the boat sunk uh, I grabbed the cooler the waves were bad we were trying to swim for a second and Sean goes uh, Dad, I got my phone. And he pulls out his phone. It's cracked. It already was. And, uh, you know, we're in a rip. Water's going in our mouth and he's bouncing. And he got 911. And, uh, they said, we want, we have your coordinates. And we want us, we want you to keep talking to us. And Sean said, my dad's having trouble breathing. And water's going in our mouths. And um, right about then a wave came and took the phone right out of his hand. So I don't, you know, I don't know if I was really scared. Everything was going through my mind. Like, what are they going to do that my boat sunk in the ocean? You know, I didn't think, I didn't think I was going to die. But <laughs> chances are, I mean, we were probably going to die. If it weren't for our life jackets 
and the cell phone because we couldn't gain any footage towards shore at all. Uh, you know, just trying to stay next to the boat was an ordeal. And um, so uh, we were in the water for 40 minutes and the uh, police came and rescued us and it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Oh man, just a crazy situation. So guys, make sure your life jackets are adequate. I'd, I'd have something else to grab. Probably should have a two, uh, you know, ship to shore radio, handheld radio, other than just a cell phone. I mean, the cell phone saved our lives. You gotta have a cell phone. And the officer mentioned to me, because of the type of day and it was getting dark, um, there's colored smoke signals that you can have in your pocket and they work uh, if you get wet and there's also flares pocket flares that would help um, no one was gonna see us it was just pretty much the cell phone that saved us it was getting dark um, it's pretty crazy not a day goes by that it doesn't all flash through my mind and the loss of all my equipment is really a, a heartbreaker. But we're alive and I'm here to pass this story on. It might help somebody in some way keep them alive. So stay tuned and keep off my bass. So uh, we tried to remain cheerful and calm and cracked a couple of jokes. And the, the funniest thing, I mean, we laughed while we were dying was uh, our cooler that we were holding was full of fish. We lost everything except the catch. So you might say that was a very expensive cooler full of fish. Considering uh, over $3,000 in, in charges for sea tow to get the boat out from underwater and all that. <laughs> yeah, ten thousand dollars worth of gear, a boat, a kicker motor, yeah, everything. So be safe. Don't let that happen to you.